lounge and sun. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan. And I'm Ronnie. No more picks of the week, but we're going to talk spotlight some books that we dig. I think we've we I don't think we mentioned it last week when we did the books we did last week. But anyways, that's kind of what we've switched to. So you can find these videos in the weekly poll playlist or you can find them randomly. Uh, but there's two books that came out this week. One of them you can see it in Manny's hand. Ultimate Invasion number one uh, by Jonathan Hickman, Brian Hitch, Andrew Curry, Alex and Claire. That's the full creative team. We were talking about it before we recorded. Hefty price tag. Did not realize it was this much. I don't think it, I don't think it needed to be this much. I, I mean, no, I mean, it's a, it's a, maybe six ninety nine. And yeah, I it's a nice like, feeling comic. It's you know, it's a little bit extra longer. Like the paper stock is is. I mean, for, we've always talked. I think recently that like when you compare like Marvel and DC, like uh, Marvel is sometimes a little substandard in like their their printing. You know, like. Yeah, this like, the the thickness of the actual interior pages is a little bit thicker than yeah. So so it's a it's a nice feeling comic and the images really pop. So I get the extra price, but like yeah, I mean uh, eight ninety nine is yeah. I mean that could be a whole another topic of discussion is Marvel and the way they're pricing stuff. I don't need to get into that. Uh, yeah. But that, I mean, just, I'm just going based off the, the the retailer group on Facebook. But anyways, uh, I love the Ultimate Universe. Um, it got know, me back into comics after quick, a lapse, man. Quick, we'll just give a quick rundown for anybody that yeah. doesn't remember the Ultimate line. I mean, I don't know how you wouldn't. The MCU, a lot of the Avengers stuff is based on that. The Nick Fury, Samuel Jackson, literally, that's how yeah. Brian Hitch drew him in the Ultimates, written by Mark Miller. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, like that was what or I think it was year two thousand. They gave us like um, a revamped version of the marvel universe so we got spider-man and x-men those are the two books they launched with eventually they expanded to the ultimates which is avengers um they did a fantastic four book and the whole impetus was like no continuity starting from grand ground zero brian bendis did spider-man almost almost as if if the marvel universe were created then you know so it was modernized you know like it wasn't about so much about radioactivity as it was about genetics. Genetics is sort of like the, the time thread through everything. Everything was sleeker, funnier, like more cinematic. I would I would use a word, you know. Well, you know, with Brian Hitch, I wouldn't necessarily yeah. say all of it was more cinematic. Yeah, yeah I, I guess because Ultimate really set the tone, but but you're right, not so so much cinematic, but modern in its approach and its <laughs> humor and sensibility. Yeah, well, yeah, it was uh, Spider-Man for the 21st century was what I was well, yeah, told. Spy- at, at X-Men. Peter was a kid again, you know. Yeah, like, so, like that, so. And, it and it did very well. It, it, it did very well. It did well. extremely well. And it was, and it was good. Most of the books, I think, were good. Like I said, I, I had probably like my last few years in high school and uh, a couple of years when I, when, I, when I was at college, like I, I, I still dabbled in comics, but not like I did like in middle school and like ninth and 10th grade. But, you know... um. At the time, I actually had moved out to California to 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 help a friend like get himself settled and everything, and uh, I really had nothing to do. So I went walked into a comic shop, saw this, and it, I mean, it pulled me back in the comics. So it, it was a great time and a great line of comics. Yeah, it was it was definitely when I guess it was like right before high school for me, because this is yeah. like the the tail end of eighth grade is when it came out. Like I still remember going into my shop and like. Cause my shop has evolved. So it was like just the one unit they've expanded since, but I remember going in there to get the ultimate number one. I remember ultimate Spider-Man one. I was a little bit late on, I didn't get into it until issue three, but they had that reprint of one and two. And then that's the same thing for me. Yeah. And then same thing with ultimate X-Men, but it was like very well received it, you know, like not all of those types of books do well, but these did well. They had really good creative teams. Um, and eventually like, everything that it wasn't everything that made it stand out from marvel it ended up becoming because obviously when you're going to be around for years which the ultimate universe was you're going to have the same continuity so it's not going to be as as uh easy to jump into it's not going to be as like new reader friendly and that was kind of also what their goal was right because the movies were coming out and it was a it was a way for people that hadn't been reading marvel to kind of jump in but at the tail end of it hickman was a part of it and He's also the one that destroyed it. Uh, right, with, with Secret, Secret Invasion. Secret Wars. Yeah. 
you know, this is where we got Miles. Like, the, the, Miles was kind of at the tail end, right? Like, the after yeah. Peter, that Peter died, we got a new Spider-Man. Um, on the cover alone, you can see that is the Reed Richards of the Ultimate Universe. So him and Miles are the only two characters to survive the incursion, the incursion right, of all the, that, the whole Marvel multiverse being destroyed. I'm glad Hickman's the one that came back. First of all, I love Hickman's work. I'm Me glad, too. I, I'm I, I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm really glad there's not a bunch of charts in this book. You know, there's like, there's like one, I think. <laughs> yeah, and, I, I, it's, and I'm fine with that. You know, like I don't. I sometimes I'm like they're they're overused, and I feel like maybe he's not doing them as much because everybody in the X offices is now like just completely every single comic does it. And it's just too much, you know. But yeah, this it was is like, cool when he first started doing it. You know what I mean? Like, but now it, it is a little bit oversaturated, you know. Because I, I don't read a lot of the X titles, but I look at them and I'm like, these all look like Pikmin comics, you know? Yeah, and it's like it should have just been only him that did them. It yeah. shouldn't have been in every book. But anyways, so we got Hickman, who was at the tail end of it. We got Brian Hitch, who was at, in there in the early days. And I love that Brian Hitch is coming back to do this spoiler alert to i mean if you're not paying attention ultimate universe is coming back too which yes. i think i kind of wish they would have held that off a little bit in in terms of announcing it like let this book be out marvel keeps doing this weird shit with their announcements i don't, I don't know to me marketing wise if it's not coming out in the next two months in the next three months nobody was asking about it just wait just let this book be its own thing like we you, you don't need to do anything to build up the excitement of this book. You know, it's Hickman. Hickman's going to sell in shops. Like, I think that I was mean, evident, they, evident with yeah. the X-Men books, right? Like, I have never seen so many people talking about X-Men in years. Like, when he's doing House of X and Powers of Ten. But anyways, we're, we're talking Ultimate Universe. So we open up, and you don't even really know, like, where they're going. You just see this tower, the, the Blackguard building, which I'm not very familiar with. i pretty well versed in the current marvel stuff but i'm not familiar with that tower maybe i just missed it in other stuff but these like mercenaries are going in they're, they're breaking in what are they doing they're gonna go break somebody out because they're gonna like get some insane amount of money and you just see you this... notice they, they do have the makers uh symbol on their chest too the soldiers really? yeah oh, i didn't even pay attention to that yeah, I, I mean, I, I I noticed it uh, like as I was flipping through it again. Okay, this yeah, you know what? Yeah. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't even pay attention to the fact that they had that on their chest. That's actually pretty cool that they did that. So we break in, and I I love this image of the maker, which is evil. Yeah, Andy Richards. He's just sitting in this cube, staring, and you end up finding out it's the negative zone. So he's trapped within. So he can. There's only he can get out of his cube, but that's going straight into the negative zone. I think that that's right. Yeah, crazy. Um, yeah, because then there there is a there is the uh, the aforementioned chart that we were talking about yeah. later and, on in the book. And look at this fucking Reed Richard. He's such a cocky little shit. Um, and that's that's another thing that I thought was interesting about the Ultimate Universe. And Hickman's the one that did it, um, making Reed evil, making him yes. the ultimate. Well, no pun intended. The ultimate villain of the yeah. ultimate universe. And more so when he came over to the 616 universe. I mean, he was a part of um of the I think it was Donny was it Donny Case's Venom run? Like uh that that well he was more a villain in the ultimate universe. I mean he was yeah. he was when he was brought here, he he was a villain in Venom, but not I wouldn't say he was like very he was in there, he just wasn't a main yeah. thing. What I'm not sure of is did what when did he take the name the maker? Was that while he was still in his Oh long, or... long before. Yeah. yeah, long before. Yeah, Hickman did that. that yeah, that. I mean, there, there's a whole like they even rebooted all the numbering of the Ultimate Universe at one point when like Hickman was doing it. I forgot who else. I think Brian Wood was writing some X Men stuff back then. Yeah. So the, he's been a villain for a long time. It, it didn't start with Venom. I think so. I, you know what else I love is how the lettering is different from the Ultimate Universe. Like how you'll have lowercase letters as opposed to all yeah. uppercase. And that's how you can tell when somebody's from that universe. That's how they would differentiate it. In in like a well, mostly in Secret Wars is is when you would see it because you wouldn't see yeah. it before, or you'd see it in the Spider Man uh, book when uh, Bendis wrote that the first meeting between Peter, uh, our Peter, for the regular six one six and the Ultimate Universe. But these guys are they're they're messing up his plans because he fucking dude. This is what's crazy is they were having him talk to therapists and slowly. 
he manipulated the therapist and brainwashed and re rewired their brain somehow like brainwashed yeah them and sent them he out like reverse recruit. engineered the therapy i think that's what he said he's like he almost yeah. like reverse engineered like the therapy and turned it on them this reed richards maker like he's also been able to use his like stretch powers to stretch his brain in a way that like makes him like even smarter i think you know like he's he's like like you know like nearly like you like a like a cosmic intelligence I, I, you know almost yeah i mean in the in the ultimate books, his head was misshapen. Like, I, I mean, I don't know how his head. Got I think back maybe to the, I shape. think maybe the the helmet is is some kind of tool, so he doesn't have to do it as much, you know, or to sort of contain it. Yeah. Because I I did notice that his head wasn't misshapen, but like he's very eager to put the helmet on. The helmet must serve some kind of a purpose, you know. Yeah. So he he makes his fucking big escape, and then it's and then we see the Blackguard building is destroyed, and that's. And that's six weeks ago. This is about two weeks later then. Because the, we originally start off two months prior in the past. And now we're six weeks. So the building's destroyed. I love the interaction between T'Challa, Black Panther and Reed. Because he yes. kind of calls him out. He's like, why are we pretending that you couldn't find a way to look if you wanted to. To find out like what is going on. I just... Black Panther is at his best with when, he ta- when he's kind of has this like little bit of a like an attitude because he's like one of the highest intelligence in the marvel universe as yeah well, right I mean, so, he's top top five you know up there with like stark and richards and doom yeah so his banter with reed is something i fucking love in this book and and if you haven't read hickman's fantastic four go pick that up as well because that is one of the best fantastic four runs in recent memory in a, in a long time so they they get back and they and they go into the cube right and they see what they what is supposed to be Reed, and it's not. So he realizes, like, oh, fuck. He's like, I'm less worried about where he is and more about what he's doing. Because he knows. He's he's literally dealing with an evil version of himself. That's not something you want to see. Like, if Reed is one of the smartest people on the planet and you make him evil, like, to me, it's kind of like if you were to make... It's not the same, but like kind of like Superman evil, right? Or yeah. if Lex Luthor was good. Right. And it's like the right. complete opposite of what he does to the planet of like trying to destroy Superman. Like, what if he just was a hero and did good stuff? It's the complete like or 180. And so now we get where we keep jumping in time. Right. I love this part where uh, fuck, what's Reed's son's name? Oh, Franklin. When Franklin's Franklin, like, yeah. ru- like rubbing the sleeve, he's like, dad. And like, you just see uh, the maker just like sh- shush him up. And like, it looks yeah. like his dad. So he doesn't question it. And yeah, because genetically they're the same, you know, like so he's or down now, here he's, close. now he's like breaking into Reed's lab. He's trying to fucking you don't know what he's doing. You just get these like quick little glimpses, and then we go to the Illuminati, dude. And we haven't yeah, seen which we, Illuminati in a long time. I know I, I was I was real uh thrilled to see that man. Like I was like, oh man, like this is this is hitting a lot of cool buttons for me, you know. It's bringing back a lot of cool concept that Marvel hasn't touched upon in a while. And I've always loved the Illuminati. I thought it was a great concept. Same thing with the the, the Campbell, you know, like the the, the the villain version of it. I'm this, glad to see them. Yes, this was guys, like this is when I got excited. To be honest, yeah, with you. this was this was the part of the book that I'm like, oh hell yeah, dude! I cannot wait to see what Hickman does. And then you get them narrating what the maker has been doing since he's been escaped he's going to wakanda he's going to uh attila like he's stealing attila, artifacts from every everywhere yeah from all the major points and a- actually really he's stealing from the illuminati if you think yeah. about it he's stealing something from each place that they represent right yeah um he's stealing stuff from stark from a from an old fucking warehouse that has been abandoned, kind of stealing from the uh, Inhumans. He's stealing from Wakanda. He's stealing from the X Men. Stealing a portal, like which is weird because they're right. Like they say it, it's only for mutants. So what is he trying to do with that? And then yeah. stealing from you know Doctor Strange and Namor and and they just have no idea. And I just I love that they don't even know what the fuck he's doing. And you would think that all this intelligence in that room that they could somehow figure it out. And I think Reed has an inkling, but you don't really, he doesn't really like say it. Right. Yeah. I think he's, a. I think Reed is, is, I mean, very intimidated by the maker because it's like he's, he's being that they, they share a lot of similarities. Reed's 
probably has an idea, like, you know, like, what would I do if I were him? You know? I think he might be a little afraid to, to sort of explore that. But, like, and when it, you said you were on board with the Illuminati, I, I was on board. I mean, I, I just want to go, go ahead and say that I love the maker. I love, like, that, you know, he's become this big-time villain. And, like, I'm, I'm, I'm so stoked that this series is sort of focusing. Yeah, no, I'm glad that he's back to being the focus because I thought it was such a great idea to make him a villain in the ultimate universe because it's like how how do you make it different how do you take these characters that we've all been reading about or some some people have been reading since the 60s and make it fresh and interesting and it can't just be you take the characters and you update them you got to give us something different you got to change it up like captain america was a lot different even like his whole demeanor he wasn't this like you know cookie cutter uh soldier you know like he was kind of a douche at times the yeah way he was very it. very much like like sort of like a meathead soldier in a way times, yeah you know? you know and then tony stark was a complete lush you know like just a yeah. complete fucking alcoholic did like no shame had no desire to be sober you know like so to take reed i think was genius because he's like he's like the poster child for like the perfect family you know yeah and then you take him and you make him I would say even worse than Doctor Doom, you know. And it's like it, it's it's an interesting take because like it's just like you could argue that someone of Reed's intelligence would lean that way because they're gonna. I mean, he literally is smarter than everybody else on the fucking planet. You know what I mean? Like under the right circumstances, that's gonna make someone be like, "I'm better than these people." You know what I mean? These people should be doing what I say. I mean, I, I think that the key is like when they're describing him at the beginning in one of the charts. They say, like, he's got a near universal intelligence, but he also suffers from megalomania. You know what I mean? Which is like a, literally, a, it's, a, it's a mental disorder, you know? Yeah, it's psychosis. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. So he, he's got it, you know? Oh, and he's also got personal disassociative disorder. So the guy's a fucking sociopath. You know what I mean? It's Reed Richards, no conscience, no ability to emp empathize with anybody or anything. So fucking scary. You know? Yeah, exactly. He's terrifying, dude. And then, yeah. like, and then having him wear that that fucking helmet, it just like makes him look more menacing. Because when you, you see when he has it off, like, and he smiles, with the exception of the scar over his eye, he doesn't really look very intimidating. But it's this fucking persona that he has now taken on, and yeah. it's almost and his similar body to posture. And he's always standing hands behind. You know what I mean? It's he's very like a uh, he. He really plays a part of a supervillain very well. You know, there's a lot of classic supervillain tropes about him. And, and I can, you can also tell that Hickman loves writing this character because, like, it's just, it's so natural to him. And, and the, the shit, like, the maker says, like, I mean, he's also kind of funny sometimes, you know what I mean? In the way he talks and, like, he's, he's great. And yeah. I also love that, that there's an element of body horror. I mean, there always has been a fantastic core, you know, but with the maker especially, you know, like, like the way he disintegrates the people in the beginning when he's escaping, like, like there's a Cronenbergian like sort of vibe. Yeah, what I really, what I really dig like. too is um, as evil and as a kind of douchebag douchebaggery that he does <laughs> um, is when he goes to Miles, has this interaction with Miles, and he's like, he basically is trying to explain to him. Do you not realize? Do you not feel like he's like you didn't know? So Miles is in complete awareness of the fact that he's from another universe. But the maker wasn't like he had this idea, but he wasn't really sure. He knew he just knew something was off. But now he has the full knowledge of being there. And to, for him to go to Miles and be like, you know, come back with me. And he's he calls him brother. I just think it's yeah. really I just think it's interesting because there's no there's no evilness to him in this moment. In these few, I think it's like four. four yeah, it's four pages. Yeah. And you don't really. You really get the sense that he's just trying to take him and bring him back home, right? Like, yeah, not... I was trying to figure that out too. Like, is there an ulterior motive? Like, does he need Miles because since Miles is also from the from the Ultimate Universe, right. uh, like, is is he a necessity in order to bring it back? You know, it seems I mean, like maybe... maybe not though because he just yeah. he's like, all right, well, he let just you leave. Want. Here's my card. You know, kind of, you know, like, let me know if you want to come back. I'm here. And then we flip and we get this amazing double page spread that Brian Hitch is just fucking known for. And we get the yeah. Illuminati going after the maker and the pages that proceed after that. I just I love when maker smiles with that helmet on 
I think that's the most terrifying that he looks because you know, like he's doing some fucked up shit, you know, and and yep, and the, yep, yep. In the conversation between him and Reed, even asking him, like, would you change it? Would you have killed me now, given the chance? And you see Reed hesitate and then say yes. And like that's that's crazy, dude, because like you don't ever fucking see Reed even come close to wanting to. I mean, that's murder. You know what I mean? Even yeah. though, I mean, and it's it's a weird sort of murder because you're killing yourself, you know. And then the epilogue, dude. The epilogue this, was awesome. This is the where you get see, like this is why they didn't need to tell us. They yeah. didn't need to tell us that it was coming back. This is the new Ultimate Universe. We get the retelling even now. Like this is, but I, I love how I love how the captain says now, but also then. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because it, it's a little bit. It's almost like he he recreated his universe, but also pulled it back to a he to a certain point, and I think that's very important. The maker, I mean, look at his name. You know what I mean? He's called the maker. He's very precise. Yeah, so he's, he's got saying what he came to do. This is what he was born to do. You know? Yeah. Like, we get Peter. We get Liz Allen, and uh, the spider is about to you know about to bite Peter. Yeah, it's the same as in the Ultimate Spider-Man. You know what I mean? It's like, a little bit different, though. It is a little bit like I was. I, it was like I, I was it Liz with Peter. I don't remember. Huh? Liz wasn't with Peter, so no. like this is a completely different scenario. The building they're in is a completely different scenario because he was best friends with MJ at that point. Like they were together, yeah. and so yeah, th- th- there's definitely some changes. Um, it's not. Like isotope genome accelerator, that's also a little bit different. I, I mean, I'd have to go back and look at my Ultimate Spider-Man um, comics to like fully get it, but I know that this is a completely different scene. Peter looks different. He's got short hair as opposed to kind of like longish hair that he had back then. So he is there is differences to this universe, and he takes the spider and keeps it from biting Peter. So what else well, is he going to change? What's interesting he, is that he he puts it back in a test tube so he doesn't kill the spider or anything i'm not you know like it's yeah he doesn't not, like now I'm, I'm not wondering what he's trying to do because he's not trying to bring back his universe exactly as it was he's trying to create whatever version he's of his, molding uh, it molding it making it with you know living up I mean, to his to, to, to his uh to his moniker there so what yeah. he wants to do so and i, I mean I, hitman uh like we've we've always talked about like ennis being great at it uh you know um so many writers, the the fucking cliffhanger ending. You know what I mean? Like, this is such a great ending. Like, it the, it just hooks you. And if you weren't on board with a concept before, I don't see how you couldn't be on board with a concept now once you realize what's going on and how the the ultimate universe is being brought back. It's 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 very cool. And uh, I I don't think that it was just a cash grab to try and bring back the ultimate universe. It, it feels very organic with what was done in Secret Wars. And with the character of the maker as well. I mean, not it makes me feel like there's a reason they kept the maker around, you know? Well, they always had a backdoor. Even if you didn't have the maker, you had Miles. Yeah. And, My- and Miles didn't forget. Like that Hickman created that backdoor. Yeah. You know, like he was the one that he, I mean, obviously I don't think they wanted to get rid of Miles because Miles was a super popular character, but yeah. he is the one that gave us the backdoor with the maker and Miles Morales being the two characters yeah. that survived the ultimate universe being, you know, destroyed. I'm just very excited for what comes back. Like, I don't know. I, I wonder if people that don't have as much of a knowledge, I'd be interested to talk to them, how they kind of what their right. reaction from this book is, because like I for the exception. OK, look, I read basically the majority of the ultimate universe leading up to before they re kind of revamped it with a Brian Wood and yeah. Hickman. Like I didn't read all of the Hickman stuff. Me neither. You yeah. know, I kind of jumped off when Mark Miller was gone and I didn't read all the Miles stuff until much later. So I read the initial Ultimate Spider-Man run and even then like the last like 10 issues I didn't get. Like I just wasn't reading it anymore. It was like I I don't I don't know for whatever reason. Yeah, I'd be interested to know what people think about this. I think that, you know, if you have a working knowledge of you know miles i guess maybe if you kind of know what miles's deal is but yeah i think this is more for i don't know how inclusive this 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 book is to be honest with you if i'm being completely honest i think it's a great no i I get it i mean 
multiverse and the and uh, you know alternate universe and everything is huge right now. I mean, every every it, it seems like what every superhero story is leaning to now. So like, I know I I, uh, I think you're right. It, I think emotionally, like it's gonna have a much bigger impact for a reader if they're familiar with the Ultimate Universe and the Ultimate Universe was important to them. You know, I think it's also a clever way to sort of use what's popular now. Uh, you know, as a trope of superheroes. And, uh, and, and you know, and give it an interesting twist. Yeah, like no, I think, look, I think it's twist. a great comic. I think anybody could pick it up and enjoy it, whether you know about the Ultimate Universe or not. But yeah. I do think that, I just think it's interesting that they chose now to bring it back. I, I'm glad they went with Hickman because yeah. Hickman does really good world building. And I think that that's one of his strongest suits. And plus, he's written these characters, all of them. He's written yeah. Avengers. He for, to, if I being completely honest, I want a Namor book by him. Like that's like one of my dream. Oh, books. Wow, I thought, yeah, that would be that like, would be good. I would love a Namor book by Hickman. But his Fantastic Four, he's written. He's written Avengers. He's written Ultimates and all that stuff. So like he is the guy to do this. And I'm kind of curious to see where this goes and how the Ultimate Universe is going to have a place in today's comic book market. I think it's a. I don't think it's a bad idea to bring it back. But I'm interested to see, like, what are their plans moving Right, forward. and how is it going to be utilized? Because remember, when the Ultimate Universe first came out, like, there wasn't even a hint. I, I don't think there was ever any intention at first to even cross it over, let alone make it such an important part of, like, the the, the main book, comic book line. But now it's like the, the relationship is much more symbiotic between the two universes, where it's like... Like you said, you know, like the Marvel Universe has always had a, a, a multiverse and the Ultimate Universe was, was just one of them. But it seems like it's becoming a very important one. Yeah. And it's just interesting to see what will happen with Miles. You know, I think that that's something to pay attention to. Do they pull Miles out of the main continuity? Against his will, maybe. You know? Yeah, or, because or, like, or to, does... be, to be honest with you, like, I wouldn't be upset with that. You can still have a Miles book and it doesn't because I think it's I mean, look, I, I could go on. I, I, I don't want to get get super yeah into how that. permanent are some of these changes going to be how permanent is the return of the ultimate universe going to be like there's so many things that 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 you can think about and you know hickman is is someone that like he's so great at executing these like really heady like scientific concepts i mean it can go in any direction you know like it could lead to a whole new ultimate universe it could lead to the ultimate universe coming back and fusing even more with the and you know like who knows he, it, you, we don't know, and that's the exciting thing about. Well, this. it is separate. They did say. I mean, they're launching a new line of Ultimate books. Oh, they're okay. Not, so they're it not. Is. Yeah, they're not connected. They're they're creating something new. That's why I got mad that they spoiled it because, like, I would have rather had kind of like got an inkling, like like after reading this issue, if I didn't already know that, I would have been like, oh shit, are they gonna are they bringing it back? Like that yeah. that would have been my reaction. Instead, my reaction was like, oh. What's he going to do with this Ultimate Universe? How is this going to be different? And like, I'm still excited regardless, but I would have rather not known anything going into the into the fucking book. And it's like, I can't help it. I get emails from from Marvel PR, you know? So it's like, I get these things. And I'm like, I, I do too, but they go to my spam folder a lot and I, and I, and I forget to check that sometimes. Yeah, but so, like whenever I do, I'm like, oh, well, that press release is a month old. Kind of, kind of. Yeah. But anyways. No, no longer a uh, Great book. Go pick it up. Yeah. I'm excited for the Ultimate Universe uh, to come back. I'm, I was excited when this book was announced. Um, I'm a huge Hickman fan. So, uh, yeah, go pick I'm it a up. Hickman fan and a Brian Hitch fan. I mean, Same. you know, Brian Hitch sort of pioneered that widescreen format for comics, you know, so. So go pick it up. It's great to see him drawing these characters. Man. Yeah, pick it up, man. It's definitely probably uh, one of the top books of the week. In a week, I had a, a lot of good books, in my opinion. I haven't so. read all my books, but I, I'm probably going to say this now. It was my favorite book of the week. Yeah, it's probably tied with the other book we're going to talk about this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess but it's for different that reasons. Excitement to read it. Uh, Ultimate Invasion uh, was the first one I read when I got home. Yeah, you know, like, my, ex my excitement right for the book, like they're for two very different reasons. But anyways, go pick yeah. it up. Anyway, follow us on social media. Hit the subscribe subscribe button so you're notified every time a new vid goes up. And on that note, we're out.